A couple of weeks ago on the cow-calf corner, we visited with you about the impact of a prolonged calving process or a prolonged stage two of calving, the impact that it would have on the cow. And we talked about how if that goes on and on and on, that that cow will be slower to come back into estrus and have a smaller chance to become pregnant in the upcoming breeding season. Well, let's this week visit about what that prolonged calving process would mean to the calf. We know that as that calf passes through the birth canal, at some point in time, the umbilical cord will be trapped against the pelvic rim of the cow as uh, she's expelling that calf from her reproductive tract. Each time she has a contraction, each time that that uh, umbilical cord is trapped against the pelvic rim, then for a few seconds at least, that calf is in a situation where he can't get oxygen from the mother's blood supply, he can't get rid of carbon dioxide back to the mother's supply, and over time what happens is what the uh, veterinarians or the scientists call respiratory acidosis. That means that uh, the calf's own blood then can become somewhat acidic. If it is severe enough and lasts long enough, that can cause some damage to some of the organs of the calf, in including the calf's brain. Ranchers sometimes will talk about having a, a calf that was born during a difficult birthing process that eventually they call a dummy calf because he quite frankly acts very differently, is, is uh, hard to work with, uh, we think there's probably been some brain damage just due to the hypoxia or lack of oxygen that occurred for a period of time during the, the calving process. Also, calves that have been acidotic, those that have this uh, high uh, acidity in the bloodstream will be more sluggish, they'll be slower to get up, therefore slower to find the teat, to have a chance to nurse and get that very important colostrum that that calf needs to get the antibodies to help protect them against such things as calf diarrhea. That's why if uh, you notice in your herd that perhaps you see more calf scours, calf diarrhea from calves born to two-year-olds than you might see from mother cows. And that can be for two reasons. That long delivery process causing the respiratory acidosis in the calf, plus the fact that the new two-year-old mother just isn't giving as much milk as that older cow. So I think what we can learn from this is, yes, there is a reason to provide assistance if we see that two-year-old that isn't making real progress in an hour of the calving process, let's go ahead and, and bring her in, examine, and see if we can provide assistance, get that calf going, and uh, having a better chance to get the colostrum that he needs early in life. As we said before, if you're watching a mature cow, and she isn't making real progress in a half an hour, then we probably need to examine her because there's probably something wrong. If we'll make sure that those calves get off to a better start, get that colostrum as soon as possible, we'll have a healthier calf, not only an early part of life, but now research tells us that they'll be healthier even as they go on to into the later stages of the beef production cycle, be less likely to get respiratory disease, say, as they go into a feedlot. That early assistance or proper timing of assistance can be real helpful, not only to the mother in terms of getting her rebred, but to the health of that calf. Hey, we look forward to visiting with you again next week on SunUp's Cow-Calf Corner.